Good afternoon. Welcome to the Max Happy Homestead. I'm Colby. Uh, the rest of the family's inside, so you're just getting a little bit of me today. Uh, we've got the chickens over here. I just want to show you an update though on the pigs. You see American Guinea Hog, and then you see the new pigs that we've gotten. They have now become best buddies, so they're kind of hanging out all together. That Those are blue butt Yorkshires. They're going to be our new feeder hogs. Um, one can't figure out how to get through. <laughs> this this little fence we put up the other four have gotten here, but he can't figure out how to get there. So uh, we've not got them named yet. Their ultimate goal is to become ham and pork chops and bacon and all that good stuff. So, um, but they're hanging out, having a good time. I'm kind of glad the boar has not freaked them out uh, and the boar has not went crazy with them. So um, what we're going to do today though is we've got to get again some more prepping done before we go. Uh, I've got to get some hay moved for the cows. Let them eat some hay. I put them on some ryegrass today, one of my paddocks. I did not want to do it too soon. However, it, it, you know, they need they needed a little bit something other than hay. So I put it on there for right now because once we leave Wednesday, going to Kentucky and uh, Tennessee to the Stivers and also to some uh, to our another place that we're going to in Tennessee, we have got to put them in this permanent fencing again and get them out of the, the temporary paddock. So we're going to let them eat down that little ryegrass that just started just to give them something good and tasty because once we put them in here there's not a lot of grass because it's again transitional season they'll be on full hay for that week. So we're going to go and get hay here, going to go and get hay there so it gives them some supplemented feed while they're eating the ryegrass because I don't want them to get full on just ryegrass. Uh, so I'm going to put a little hay in both places. Uh, just a little update as you see the garden is doing wonderful. Peas are doing great. They're actually starting to bloom, so is, that's a great thing. And then uh, the four original rows of collards and mustards, and then the two new rows of lettuce and collards. So doing great. Everything's coming up really good, as you can see. Uh, all five rows or six rows are doing good here, and then, of course, the peas are doing great. So well, let's go ahead and get the hay moved, and then what we'll do is from there, we will... Uh, we'll go ahead and um we've got some feed to unload we've got to get the brooder ready for uh the new meat chickens coming the meat chickens will be here wednesday the day we're actually supposed to be leaving so i'm a little nervous about that but we've got to get that done too so we've got the bales of hay here uh we've been breaking it down because i try not to have any waste on our hay so we don't like to give them a full bale because they'll stomp on it they'll use the restroom in it they'll do all the things that i don't want them to do so but today we are going to try to move the whole bale because they need to eat it so Let's get that done right quick. dumping you can see they've already spread a little bit and that's why i want to make sure i hate waste so i don't like giving them a full bale of hay because they truly don't need it most of the time now that we're transitioning you can see there's not really a lot of ryegrass in this paddock it's just some that was growing but i needed to get them out of that other paddock still letting the other ryegrass do okay so this was just a way that they could stay in this paddock this this temporary paddock i'll take this bale that's left put over in this permanent fence paddock um when we go uh, in the next few days but i wanted to give them some hay just give them something to fill them all up they're looking great i mean but she i'm surprised she has not calfed yet which i'm glad that she has it again now since we're having to go in the next few days so so we're going to be watching her just because she's getting so close now look look how pretty now, normally their coats are just real shiny but you see how they're all starting to put on their winter coat they're just real thick hair uh, this is not usually her she's really shiny and real thin summer coat so they're really starting to put on their winter hair. Uh, to me, animals tell you more than anything when the, the time of weather is changing. Because again, she's she's really putting on some thick hair. You see how thick hers is already. Now she tends to have a little bit thicker hair, Beauty does, but she's put on a lot of thick coat. Uh, again, all of them are starting to really put on a thick coat. The only one you hadn't, can't tell, and, and he puts on the thickest, 
is Daddy O. Daddy O hadn't really started putting it on too much. Hey, bud. Hey, buddy. He's a big sweetheart. But he hadn't really put on his, his winter coat yet. He's starting to get a little bit thicker hair right around his head. But that's just his nature. He gets real curly head right there. But, uh, but you know, uh, all the rest of them are really starting to put on some winter coats. Um, also, I know we have a lot of new subscribers. So what I'll do is I'll give an update on some of the new, the other cows we have at the other property. Um, but these are just the ones we have here on the homestead. So let's go ahead and get the rest of the chores done that we need to get done. I just wanted to go ahead and get this hay out to them. It's just a beautiful afternoon, cool breeze. I've got some flannel on. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time of year in Mississippi. I'm glad. You know, people don't realize, uh, some of you probably do because you own farms, but uh, when we go places, it's a pretty big endeavor. Uh, we have to get so much stuff done around here to make sure uh, that we're ready, of course, that uh, my normal job is ready for me to go. And then, of course, getting ready with our farm, uh, with us having our winter gardens and our new chicks are coming out, our breeding chicks, our bro excuse me, our broody chicks. The broody chicks uh, are the broody, brooder, broody and her friend. Their chicks are the layers, basically, and the new permaculture chickens. Uh, all those are young, so they still need a lot of, a lot of babying, a lot of making sure they're okay with the heat lamps. But not only that, really what I was trying to say, blah, you know, was... Um, the meat chickens the meat birds are supposed to be here in just a few days actually they're coming the day we're leaving so we have a lot to prep prepare as they come we're supposed to get 25 to 30 on this first round so we're gonna see how that goes and probably we'll get more next time but uh we're just letting misty get her feet wet as she helps me uh, uh process them so if you're looking for a good hog to have this docile and just a good breed you can't beat the American guinea hog, but they are a slow grow and they tend to not get as big. Um, we're gonna try these Yorkshires out. Uh, the gentleman we bought them from said that they work great, especially when we put them in this forest. He said his are in forest. So it's gonna work great, I think. So we're gonna check on them one more time before we go in, but we've gotta get a lot of feed unloaded. We've gotta get some more things done to the brooder inside, get ready. Aiden has washed our new feed buckets we need to get. The nipples on those for the pigs so it's just so much to get done prior to us leaving so all right so we have all the the seed put up all the feed that's put up everything that needed to be put up so we're in the greenhouse kind of finishing out the day um i know uh, some people's already done this but I, again i can't specify enough or can't stress enough that uh, right now you can pretty much buy a lot of things at good deals because springtime is over a lot of people don't do fall gardening, which is my favorite. And, and, and you can buy things at big box stores for a good price. Home Depot, uh, Walmart, usually fertilizers, seeds, uh, topsoils, potting soils, all those kind of things, which could help you, especially if you have a place to store. So uh, I'll show you this. I've got five, um, five bags of topsoil, one cubic feet each. I got this for half off. They were half price for this, this potting soil. It's not topsoil, excuse me, potting soil. Great quality stuff. I mean, you can see it's, it's a, uh, just beautiful black soil. Um, I've also got some some old seed starting organic mix that we put on top. We're gonna plant lettuce in here. If you want lettuce all year round, I had lettuce in my raised beds all year round, and in my climate, I can do that. Um, last year in March, we were still getting lettuce, and actually it bolted uh, and started going to seed really in like April uh, when we needed it to come out anyway, so we could get other things planted there. But this is another way to do it. So we're gonna plant some lettuce. We're gonna plant some other kind of greens all through these little these little um, makeshift beds. So basically, I'm gonna have less than probably five to six dollars per bag, maybe even less than that. Uh, some seeds that I got locally, or some seeds that we grew from our lettuce last year, heirloom lettuce that did great all season. So basically, for someone who's herbing homesteading, or someone who's just got a back patio and they can't plant a garden, this is the best way to have really lettuce or any kind of small microgreens or any kind of greens all you know all winter long so if you can't plant in the ground uh, like us or you can't plant in raised beds or you don't have the space why not utilize just basically potting soil bags so we're going to go and get them planted and then uh, that'll kind of finish up the day and we will hopefully be able to go on inside get a cup of coffee and relax for the rest We'll do our lettuce first. That way you can see, we can see what does the best when it comes to the thing uh, a few weeks from now. 
So this is our lettuce. Now, our lettuce, we get the whole heads off, so the pretty uh, pure seed uh, we don't have done yet. So I'm gonna spread all of it on here. So it's almost gonna give a, a natural compost to the seeds as we plant. All right, so I wanna show you our seed. So basically, there's little seeds all in this this these heads. These were heads to the lettuce when they seed it. Now we will use that and just put it all on top and that'll help bury the seed. Um, you can pick it all out, but you know it's our personal lettuce. We're not trying to sell this lettuce. Uh, it did great last year doing the exact same thing, so we're gonna do it again this year. It saves the stealth and actually makes a little almost like a little compost. So that's gonna be the first lettuce that we grow. Second lettuce is gonna be a tango leaf from MI Gardener. Our MI Gardener stuff did okay this last year, but not as good as some of our local seed. One good thing is we're going cool, cool crop now uh, with fall. So I want to try his lettuce um, for this season, and maybe that'll do better than some of the summer stuff that we had been getting. All right, and my gardener done. Uh, next lettuce is going to be one that we get locally at a co-op here. Um, they're, they're a southern grown seed uh, from Amory, Mississippi. Um, like I said, this is where the, the, we were from south Mississippi and these are from north Mississippi. So if you can buy from co-ops, try to get seed that is local or more really to your growing zone. So we're going to go and get these planted. And the last one we have is another, um, another form of in my gardener. And then we're going to finish out with our heirloom lettuce from last year as well and see if we can get a good harvest. One minute, 37 seconds later. All planted, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and get some of this natural organic, this topsoil, and just kind of, it's just a seed starter, and we're going to kind of just put on top, so that kind of helps cover up the seed. You don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, actually, with a lot of my greens, I don't do that, but I have it here, and this will keep it weird. We're still having a few little warm days. Um, this will help kind of keep it covered and maybe get it to where it can bed really well, get a good sense of bed in there. So we're going to cover these up, so again, for less than probably 20 bucks i've got this top or this potting soil less than oh gosh probably three or four bucks worth of seed because most of it is from our garden but if not we ordered two things of it and went to a co-op and bought the rest so i probably got 25 dollars worth of, of supplies for great basically lettuce that you could have all winter so now we have again a big part of lettuce put out in our raised bed but you can never have too much lettuce i really like uh greens i love winter gardening i love winter foods um and what we can grow in cool crops now my kids not as much but my girls are starting to really like uh lettuces a lot more so this gives us an opportunity to just eat in season uh, like you always hear from sustainable and prepping people is that you need to eat in season we have really tried to replicate that you know there's so many times that we we don't have what we want or that's okay we have to learn to eat what's in season and i think that will benefit us all so we're going to get all these top look how good those look great now i'm not going to water them because it's, these these packages have been in the back of my truck and they're pretty pretty damp already so i'm just going to cover them up uh, with that topsoil i think this is a good way to to um have lettuce so if you haven't done this style i know a lot of people do this um, but again, I challenge you to do it because it's a great way to to grow less all year long and you could put in I, I, I don't know if I'd put it inside uh, We would because we actually started our soul blocks inside. So I guess we got the extra bedroom go and do it But if not at least put it on the back porch put it on a table get it where you can water it if you need to But hey, what a great way to have fresh vegetables all year long and a very easy and economical way to do it too. So we're gonna end this video. I hope you saw and enjoy the cows. We're just again doing a little bit talking about them because we're trying to just transition them, get them ready before we go. And then again, just trying to get a few more things done uh, as we got seed and feed pulled all the way around for the new piglets and for the new chickens. Uh, and then also getting ready for the meat birds. So hope you enjoyed this too. I don't know if uh, you're doing this, great. Give me some other advice of what you're doing different than us. Um, but if you're not doing this, it's a great economic way to grow some kind of greens and microgreens. And also, um, you know, you can grow mustards and things like that in these, these same little um, potting soil bags too. So good luck to you. God bless you. 
Uh, again, if you have not subscribed to the Max, we hope that you do. We hope you're enjoying our content. Tell us what you'd like to see. Uh, we've got some videos coming up on bees very, very soon because we have the fall honey that we're going to be checking. Uh, we've got some uh, video coming up on some composting, on the meat birds, on the piglets. Uh, just a lot of things going on around here. So we love to bring you around. But if there's something else that you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to show you. Uh, God bless you again. Happy homesteading.